Okay, this video is on the human muscle anatomy. We'll start from the head and neck region and work our way down to the lower leg region. So over here we have what is called the frontal belly of the epicranius, frontal belly. And looking at the model from the posterior view, back here is the um, occipital belly of the epicranius. Again, we have the frontal belly, occipital belly. And over here, right by the temples, that's the temporalis muscle. Temporalis muscle. And this circular muscle that orbits around the eye is called the orbicularis oculi. Oculi as in ocular lenses or binoculars. Orbicularis oculi. And another circular muscle that helps to purse the lips um, is called the orbicularis oris. Oris as in orifice, opening of the mouth. Orbicularis oris, orbicularis oculi, frontal belly, temporalis, and behind we have the occipital belly of the epicranius. And what's not shown here, there should be another layer of muscle that covers this whole neck region um, called the platysma and it helps to tense the skin around the neck and it also helps to depress the mandible and this bone right here is the mandible. So platysma, which isn't shown here, is a muscle that tenses the skin around the neck and helps to depress the mandible. And over here in this model, it's also not shown, but there should be a muscle here called the masseter. Um, it originates from the zygomatic arch, which is this bone here underneath the muscles. Um, and it inserts at the angle of the mandible. It helps to elevate the mandible and closes the jaw. Um, the muscle again is called the masseter and it makes sense because it kind of sounds like to masticate, to chew up food. Um, this muscle right here is called the sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. So let's break that name apart. Um, it originates at the sternal end of the clavicle. This is the clavicle here, and this is the sternal end. Um, hence the first part of the name, sternocleido. And it actually inserts at this bone here, right behind the ear, called the mastoid process. So the latter part of the name, mastoid. Sternocleidomastoid because it originates from the sternal end of the clavicle and the manubrium and it inserts at the mastoid process, sternocleidomastoid. Uh, so we'll quickly review again. We have the epicranius, I'm sorry, we have the frontal belly of the epicranius, occipital belly on the back, and this is the temporalis, orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, we have the platysma, masseter, we have the sternocleidomastoid. Looking at the back, this huge piece of muscle, upside down triangle, is the trapezius muscle. Or not the whole thing, it's actually just here, trapezius muscle. You see the fibers running this way, and you're, you can't see it here, but this piece of muscle should be um, overlapping all of this. So back to the anterior view, we'll look at the thorax region and identify all the muscles there. We have the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, which is just underneath the uh, pectoralis major. And we have what is called the serratus anterior, which is just right here, serratus anterior, which is different from the pectoralis ma uh, minor, but they're kind of, um, the minor overlaps the serratus anterior muscles. And we have the external intercostals, which are, you can see, between the inferior ribs. These are the external intercostals, and they, originate, uh, they originate from the inferior border of the superior rib. What does that mean? So these are the superior ribs, and this is actually the inferior border, and this is a superior border, right? So inferior border of the ribs that are superior to the inferior ribs if that makes sense. So the external intercostals, that the fibers run this way, and they 
originate from the inferior border of each of the superior rib, inferior border of the superior rib, that's where they originate, and they insert at the superior border of the inferior rib. So these are the inferior ribs because it's inferior to the, uh, to the ribs above. So it's, uh, it's uh, kind of telling you the relative position of the ribs to one another. So the superior rib, uh, superior border of the inferior ribs. So these are the superior borders. Now the internal intercostals are right here. Underneath the superior ribs you could kind of see. And the origin for, uh, the origin for that is that they originate from the superior border of the inferior ribs. So these are the superior borders of the inferior ribs, inferior to these ribs. And they insert at the inferior border of the superior rib. So this is the inferior border of the superior rib. And the function of the uh, internal intercostals is that they help to depress the, the rib. And the external intercostals help to elevate the rib. And looking at the posterior view, we'll um, identify the muscles here are the rhomboid muscles. This is the rhomboid major, and just above it is the rhomboid minor. The major is bigger than the minor. Rhomboid major is inferior to the rhomboid minor. And in the same manner, you have the teres muscles. The teres major is inferior to the teres minor. Um, the teres major is a bigger piece of muscle compared to the teres minor. Uh, let's go back to the anterior view and identify the muscles of the abdomen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay. Okay. Let's lower this a little bit. Okay, so we have what is called the rectus abdominis, which is this muscle here, the outermost, rectus abdominis. And we have the external oblique, which is here. If you were to take that layer and flip it over, you'll have the internal oblique. And if you were to flip that over, underneath it will be the transversus abdominis. So we have the uh, rectus abdominis, external oblique, one layer under, internal oblique, and underneath that, transversus abdominis. Mm, I don't think we're missing anything, so we'll move on to the, um, the shoulder and arm. So we have the, let's move this again. We have the deltoid muscle, and there are four uh, muscle groups that make up the rotator cuff. And you can't see it here, but if we were to put the scapula, this is a scapula, this is actually the right scapula, this is the spine of the scapula. Um, the muscle that would be found here would be the infraspinatus muscle because it's inferior to the spine, right? So infraspinatus muscle, and above that, over here, you will find what is called the supraspinatus because it's superior to the spine of the scapula. Infraspinatus, supraspinatus. And the other um, uh, muscle is called the subscapularis muscle, which will be here on this side of the scapula. Um, the fourth muscle that make up the rotator cuff would be the um, teres minor, which we've already gone over. This is the teres minor muscle here. So again, the rotator cuff is made up of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. This is the trace, uh, triceps brachii. Um, there's the long head, and there's the lateral head of the triceps brachii. Lateral head is lateral to the long head, and the medial head is medial to the long head. It's actually underneath the um, uh, long head of the triceps brachii. And if we turn it back to look at it this way, this is the biceps brachii. Biceps brachii. And we'll Hold off the lower forearm, uh, it's kind of confusing, so we'll create another video for that. <laughs>